short presentation on systematic reviews. So here we have the objectives for Module 2 um, and basically what we're going to focus on here are the uh, characteristics of a systematic review um, and also how to interpret reading a forest plot. So a systematic review, unlike your traditional um, literature review or, or narrative review, differs in the sense that there is a specific and transparent methodology behind conducting a systematic review. Um, as a result, systematic reviews um, are held in high regard because of their um, rigour and validity in terms of minimising bias. Um, every systematic review should begin with a clear, focused research question, um, hopefully using the PICO mnemonic. So, uh, breaking down the research question, you should be able to identify the patients or population, intervention, comparison and outcome of interest. Um, if it's a Cochrane review, that is, um, it's published within uh, the Cochrane Collaboration or, or the Cochrane Library, um, the authors will most likely have also completed a protocol. So a protocol is basically the methodology of the review where the uh, authors cite uh, the, the research question, the databases to be searched, um, the analysis uh, to be conducted. Uh, what we're seeing more and more these days um, is for all, uh, sorry, for all systematic reviews, um, authors generally try to um, create a protocol. Um, they can be published um, um, in databases such as Prospero. Um, and again, it just adds to the uh, transparency of conducting um, a systematic review. Um, the strengths of systematic review include, um, as I said, the, the transparent methodology. So uh, the authors should uh, demonstrate um, which and list which databases they search. So um, the obvious one is Medline, but they they should also search other databases um, and also uh, provide a, a comprehensive um, uh, uh, account of, uh, of the search strategy used for those uh, databases. Um, the, 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 the greatest strength of systematic reviews is that um, uh, each of the included studies uh, will be appraised uh, in terms of their quality. Um, and that quality is measured against um, biases such as um, selection bias and performance bias and, and whatnot. Um, if it's a Cochrane review, um, they'll use a specific uh, tool, um, which is called the risk of bias tool. Otherwise, there are other tools available um, which can generate a, a score in terms of um, uh, identifying whether uh, a study is of uh, a high quality, uh, medium quality or poor quality. Um, and sometimes that's referred to in terms of bias, so whether there's a high risk of bias, uh, medium risk or, or low risk of bias. Uh, in terms of um, the data, um, if there is two or more studies, um, usually a meta-analysis will be uh, performed. Um, so a meta-analysis, meta as name suggests, um, is a process in which um, uh, the, the, the results of the study can be combined um, in, in order to generate a, uh, a pooled result. So a couple of um, things that I just wanted to focus on here um, in, in this presentation firstly um, relates to um, the, the identification of um, uh, the studies. Um, so one of the biases that we haven't talked about yes, uh, as, as yet um, is publication bias. So publication bias in this sense, um, we, we want to identify all studies that have been published on a particular topic, um, whether they be uh, demonstrating a, a positive outcome, uh, no outcome, uh, sorry, no effect of, of uh, the intervention or a potentially harmful um, outcome. Um, and that's um, usually represented by what we call a, uh, a funnel plot. Uh, so in, in this particular case, uh, what we've got um, uh, the, the various uh, studies that we've identified um, uh, in the systematic review. Um, on, uh, on the bottom scale, so on the x-axis, we've got the uh, relative risk, um, a relative risk of one indicating no benefit or harm, anything above one uh, indicating um, a harmful effect, um, and anything below one indicating a, uh, a beneficial um, effect. Um, on the y-axis, we've got the standard error. So basically just the, the sample size um, of, of the, uh, the study. Um, and so what we would 
typically see is this inverted funnel shape. So um, uh, as I'm demonstrating now with this um, with this sketch, hopefully it works out okay. Uh, we see this inverted funnel, uh, where typically we're going to see a lot of results um, that have got uh, a large sample size sort of congregate up the top, um, and those with a smaller sample size uh, congregate to the to the bottom. Um, if publication bias is apparent, what we wouldn't see is this funnel shape approach. Um, what we may see is um, the absence of um, articles, let's say, on this end um, or on this end down here. So this particular slide illustrates um, uh, potential publication bias for this particular um, uh, systematic review, which was looking at testosterone uh, uh, therapy um, and uh, cardiovascular events amongst uh, men who uh, take it. So by simply plotting out um, the, the studies um, and their results, what we can see is this potential absence of studies around here, um, which may indicate um, uh, an absence of studies uh, that, that demonstrate a harmful um, event. So if we delve a little bit further into it, um, the authors of this particular review um, have, have um, investigated the, the notion of publication bias and, and what can potentially uh, be, be causing it. So in this particular forest plot, um, we've got um, uh, the studies that were uh, reported um, and published. And so if we look at that, um, the overall um, uh, pooled effect um, is uh, around one, so less than one. So it's, it's, it's actually indicating no uh, benefit or harm in terms of uh, testosterone replacement therapy um, and cardiovascular uh, events. Um, what they were able to identify then was the uh, the studies uh, that were sponsored by um, uh, pharma, uh, sorry, in the first um, um, uh, graph, we've got the studies that were sponsored um, by uh, the pharmaceutical industry. Um, and in the second um, uh, uh, graph, we've got the studies that were not sponsored uh, by the pharmaceutical industry. So what we can clearly see here is a difference um, in outcomes. Um, so those studies um, in the first panel um, demonstrating no harmful event, um, but when we look at the studies um, uh, in the second graphic uh, down below, we can see the pooled result uh, demonstrating uh, a potentially harmful um, event in terms of increased cardiovascular events. Um, so for whatever reason, uh, these studies may not have been published um, or not yet available and hence a possible explanation as to why we don't see them potentially um, appearing um, in that previous uh, slide, which um, we, which had the funnel plot. So changing tack quickly, um, we're just going to focus on how to interpret a, uh, a forest plot. So um, a meta-analysis uh, can be conducted on both uh, dichotomous and continuous outcomes. So um, dichotomous, it may be reported as a relative risk, um, absolute risk reduction or increase, um, odds ratio or number needed to treat. For continuous outcomes, um, it will be uh, the result will be presented as a difference between means, so a mean difference. Um, and there are two types of uh, mean differences that can be presented, um, either a weighted mean difference or a standardised mean difference. So a weighted mean difference will be used when outcomes across the studies are all measured on the same scale. So um, you know, uh, high blood pressure is a, is a classic example of um, an outcome that is always always measured on the same scale. When outcomes are mes uh, when outcomes are conceptually the same but measured on different scales, we'll use what we call a standardised mean difference. So something like pain or depression, which may be measured on different scales, can then be um, uh, uh, standardised. Um, so uh, the results are, are, are um, illustrated on the uh, on the same scale. So for example, a study might measure pain on a scale of 1 to 10, another one may measure it on a scale of 1 to 20, another on a scale of 1 to 50, 
um, a standardized mean difference will take those scales and um, trans transpose them onto one. Um, so it may be that they, they're all transposed on a scale of uh, one to five. So the next couple of slides, we just want to focus on how to interpret a, um, a meta-analysis or, or sometimes referred to as a forest plot. So um, up the top here, we've got our, um, our um, study. So this is looking at um, uh, uh, self-examination or clinical examination for the early detection of breast cancer. Um, the comparison is uh, a self-exam versus uh, no um, exam. Um, and the outcome of interest is mortality from breast cancer. So here we've got our two studies. Um, we've got our intervention group and we've got our control group. Um, and then for each study, we've got the number of participants who had the outcome. So in this case, 157 um, out of the total 57,712 um, in the intervention group. Um, and in the control group, we've got 164 out of 64,759 um, having the outcome of interest, that being mortality. Um, here we've got um, a graphical representation of the relative risk or risk ratio in this case. So we've got our relative risk here. Uh, we've got our confidence intervals here and here. Um, so we can either look at it graphically um, or we can look at it uh, numerically and identify uh, the, the relative risk um, is 1.07 uh, with a confidence interval of 0.86 to 1.34. So what a meta-analysis does is um, combine the two studies, in this case, the two studies, uh, in order to get our overall pooled effect. Now, it's not quite as simple as just adding the two studies together because, um, as you'll probably uh, see, um, the, the sample size um, from the two studies um, can be quite different. So what a meta-analysis does is it also weights the studies according to sample size, according to um, the confidence intervals um, and standard error. And so what we have is the percentage that each of these studies contributes to the overall meta-analysis here. So we can either look at the, um, uh, the weight contribution uh, numerically, um, or similarly, we can look at the, the blue blobs. So obviously the larger the blob, the larger uh, the study uh, contributes to the um, overall uh, pooled result. So when we look at the overall result, we can again look at it numerically, uh, sorry, um, numerically or graphically. So if we're looking at it graphically here, um, we've got our diamond shape, um, our confidence intervals being here or here. Um, might be a little bit difficult in this case to, to accurately look at it. So we might just refer to uh, the numerical version. Um, so we've got a relative risk of uh, 1.05 with a confidence interval of 0.9 to 1.24. So basically, because the confidence intervals don't, uh, because the confidence intervals do include one, um, the uh, meta-analysis is indicating no significant difference between uh, the intervention group and the comparison group in terms of the outcome of interest. So here we've got a, a forest plot, um, a meta-analysis, um, but from a, a continuous uh, outcome uh, viewpoint. So this particular study is looking at acupuncture uh, for the uh, treatment of pain. <clears throat> um, so the um, comparison is um, acupuncture uh, versus a placebo. Uh, we've got our studies here on the side. Um, and then for each study, we've got the mean, we've got the standard deviation, and we've got the number of participants. So same, same principles apply. Um, so if we look at this first study, uh, we're seeing that the uh, mean difference uh, favours acupuncture. Uh, the confidence intervals are there to there. So if we look at the um, numerical data um, uh, along here, uh, we can see that there's a uh, reduction of 0 0.32 points in pain um, for this uh, first trial um, in those participants that are uh, receiving the acupuncture. Um, and the uh, confidence interval is uh, negative uh, 0.61 to negative 0.03. Now the thing to note here um, with continuous data, um, the line of no effect is zero. So if the confidence interval does not include zero, um, it's indicating a statistically significant difference between the uh, intervention and control groups. 
So in this particular study, um, the first one, because um, the, the confidence interval does not include zero, um, uh, it's suggesting that acupuncture um, is uh, significantly uh, better in terms of reducing pain. So when we pull all of the results together in our pulled result down here, we can see that it clearly uh, favours the left hand side, which is acupuncture, um, and the confidence intervals don't cross over the line of no effect. Um, we can look at it uh, numerically here, and we can see that um, the combination of all of those studies um, indicates um, a reduction of 0.17 uh, points in terms of um, pain um, and the confidence interval has been minus uh, 0.26 to minus 0.08 so indicating a statistically significant um, and beneficial outcome in terms of uh, acupuncture. I hope that was of uh, use and interest um, and as always please feel free to email me if you have any questions. Thank you.